Okay, so now, um, now look at this. We have defined uh, the unknowns, right? The numerical unknowns. We have wrote down our numerical formula, the equations. What are we missing here? There is still one piece that is missing. It actually distinguishes one type of finite volume method from another. What piece have we not discussed yet that is actually required for you to code up the finite volume scheme? Oh, the time integration scheme. Yeah, that's something we haven't talked about. But there is another piece we haven't talked about before we even have a complete set of ODEs. Huh? The values of the flux, that's right. So we know that the flux is a function of u, right? That piece of information is known. But in order to complete this formula, we need the value of flux at the intervals b and c, which is at the grid points, right? Do we know the value of u at the grid points? We only are solving for the average value of u within these cells. We actually never even store the value of u at the grid points. We know ddt. But it doesn't tell me. It, 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 I, I would only know, even if I know DDT, I would only know the DDT of how the averaged U is going to increase or decrease within the volume, right? I still don't know the value of T at these points. Yeah? Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Can I take, because I know that this grid point is. is just in between this cell and this cell, can I just uh, take the average value of the average the values, right? That's a way to approximate. <laughs> actually, this kind of approximation, right? You can actually choose many different types of approximations. And uh, the, the approximation you proposed is definitely a val valid approximation for some equations. How do you approximate the value of u or ultimately the value of f at the cell interfaces is actually the where the complexity of finite volume lies right so how do you compute f so the act of computing or approximating yes The shape of the yeah. Yeah. So, so you are saying that uh, the way uh, a Faisal is uh, describing the approximation actually introduces an approximation error, right? Especially if the function is convex or concave. That's absolutely right. Just as if you use finite difference scheme to approximate a spatial derivative, you introduce an error. Here I'm saying approximating f of i plus half, right? Uh, using cell averages. It, it, it is actually the only place in the finite volume formula that has an approximation. Every other equation is actually exact, right? I mean, this integral form, there is no approximation. Defining the unknowns as the cell average, there is no approximation. This is actually the only approximation you have, you incur in finite volume. All the numerical error you make is in the act of approximating the interface flux using only the cell averaged values. So, for example, if I want to approximate this um, as a function of ui and ui plus one these are the two cell averages right so if i have a formula uh, saying that this is equal to half of f 
ui plus f of ui plus one that's an approximation right or if i can approximate it as f of half of ui plus ui plus one that's actually a different approximation right because uh, f in general is a nonlinear function right so so this is what finite volume does okay but in order if you just want to solve the kind of equations we solved with finite difference this is good enough but the reason we started talking about finite difference is because finite difference uh, uh, finite volume is because finite volume can solve equations with discontinuities and in order to solve equations with discontinuities actually neither of these work right the principle work but you have to be very careful in how do you approximate the interface flux using the two cell averages it turns out you cannot just take an arbitrary side nor can you just take the average of these cells let's analyze why